Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. Today we're looking at this, the Honda Pilot Trail Sport. Now, based on the spec sheet, this is probably the most off-road ready Honda you can buy right now, and we're gonna take it, hit our trails, and put that claim to the test. Powering the Honda Pilot Trail Sport is a 3.5 liter V6. It makes 285 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, and now it is sent through a 10-speed automatic transmission. So I mentioned most off-road capable Honda ever, and what makes it that way? Well, first, let me back up. Trail Sport has already been on the road now for about two years, and it was when it was first introduced, it was basically just badges, plastic cladding, and tires. And everyone kind of called Honda out and said, look, I know you're calling it an off-road trim, but it's not really an off-road trim. And then Honda said, wait a second, here's the new Pilot, and here's the new Trail Sport, and this has some more legitimate upgrades. So it has skid plates underneath, you'll see those in just a moment when we put it up on the rack. It also gets a one inch lift, so it gets almost eight and a half inches of ground clearance. Again, the other Trail Sport models, they didn't get that lift, this thing does. Now the off-road angles still aren't great, 19.8 degrees of approach and just 19 degrees of departure, but I'm still excited to get out there and try it out on the trails. Now the other upgrade, I mentioned they did tires before, but now we get these Continental all-terrain tires. That's a big deal. Those are really gonna help us claw our way through the mud. And then the all-wheel drive system here is also optimized for off-roading. So Honda tells us that they've thought of everything, and now we're gonna have to go out there and uh, see if they have. So yes, we're going off-road today, but this is a Honda Pilot. Let's be honest, you buy one of these to haul a bunch of people and stuff. So let's talk about the second and third rows now. We have the captain's chairs here in our trail sport. First, the baby seat situation. You do get lower latch anchors on both of these and top tethers. And then in the back, you're getting one lower latch position and three top tethers all the way across the back. So now let me climb in. So the second row here is 40 inches just over of leg room and I got loads of space, tons of knee room, enough headroom. I stand at six foot two, even with this huge panoramic sunroof, this is no problem at all. So I fit in the second row quite well. When it comes to amenities, I do have a 150 watt two prong plug down there, two USB ports, full HVAC controls. And then yes, this is a heated second row of seats. And then I also get the nice sun shades, which I always like to, especially if you have little kids, those are nice. So a pretty decent second row for adults. Let's see how the third row is. To get back there, there's a button on the side of the seat. They push forward like so, and in I go. So this is 32 inches of third row leg room. And it's just enough. I mean, this is pretty tight for me. My knees are up against the seat, but it's not horrible. And what's most impressive is this headroom. I usually struggle with headroom in the third row, but I have a lot back here. This is the kind of seat where if I had to be in here for a half an hour, I would probably be okay. And most full-size adults who are a little shorter than me, yeah, you'd probably be fine back here. So as third rows go, this is a pretty good one. Let's take a look at the storage solutions here on the Pilot as well. And while we're at the back, I'll mention 5,000 pounds of towing on this model. So this is the kind of model where you have to choose, you know, are you hauling people or stuff? Behind this third row, you're only getting just about 19 cubic feet of space. So it's not an absolute ton. Although once you fold this down, that becomes over 40 cubic feet, quite a bit with the seats folded down, which is nice. Our trail sport model gets this big, thick rubber floor mat, which is also kind of nice, assuming you got some muddy boots or something you want to put back here. And then the one trick the pilot has 
It does get this little underfloor storage bin back here. So once again, even just for groceries, simple things like that that you don't want banging around too much, you throw them in there. Now besides that, little storage bins on either side. And then over here, you are getting a 180 watt, 12 volt plug. So you do also have a bit of power at the back of your pilot. One feature that was absent on our Pilot Trail Sport is the Trail Watch camera system, a suite of cameras that shows you all the way around your Pilot when you're off-road. I reached out to Honda to ask why, and they let me know that in Canada, Trail Watch is not currently available. They might add it in the future, but right now the Trail Watch camera system is only standard in the US and not available in Canada. <laughs> Let's take a look underneath the Pilot Trails board now. And the first thing I always like to point out is the tow hooks. And here, there isn't really any good tow hooks. There's nothing up there on the front bumper. There is this spot right here, kind of in the center. You can see it's plugged up with mud there. This would be your natural tow point. And right underneath here, I'm just seeing now, it actually says jack. So Honda's suggesting, I guess if maybe if you have a high lift jack or if you're jacking it up, this is what you're gonna use. But this is funny, because this is a part of the steel skid plate. And like you can see, all that mud's jammed up in there. So it's a bit of a lip and it's just gonna end up catching things. But there you go. If you gotta tow it, you're doing it from there. Now, let's check it. That is a steel skid plate. That's our magnet that checks that for us. So you get a nice beefy steel skid plate right where you need it. You're protecting the oil pan right here, the transmission, the differential to send the power to the rear. So everything is nicely protected. Although I'll point out over here, these are plastic, so it's only steel up here in the center. And then over here for the suspension components, uh, you just get the plastic. So this, of course, is a transverse mounted V6. Like I mentioned, here's your center diff, and that's sending the power all the way to the back. The middle of this vehicle doesn't get any skid plates. The next skid plate shows up back here for the fuel tank. Once again, you do get a nice steel skid plate for the fuel tank. I like that. Uh, the suspension lift is a true suspension lift. It does appear to actually be longer springs and longer suspension components, so that's nice. And then the only other thing worth pointing out at the back is a full-size spare tire, but the rear end, once again, no skid plates back here either. So the main ones are your fuel tank and that front end skid plate up there. And a front end skid plate is always the most important because this one's gonna take the most abuse off-road. All right, folks, we're gonna try starting off here at the ditch crossing. And this is really gonna test out mostly the approach angle. We are worried about how low the front nose is here. So dad's spotting me and he'll yell if something bad's gonna happen. But we'll come in here real slow, nice and easy. I don't think it's dragging yet. Uh -huh. Oh, feels like it is now a little. Underneath, yeah. But the and nose now is... when you're starting to climb. The nose will start to come okay, up in a second. So now, now, okay, you're pushing dirt now. You're pushing about two inches of dirt. It is trying to climb, though. You think it's bad news? Oh, it'll climb, but that face is just too damn low. You're going to bust it. Okay, so I'm backing out. I think so. Okay, I don't want to push through it. Let's see how the torque is and the power is getting out of here. <laughs> it's the only problem is sometimes in reverse things can be sketchy too because they're not supposed to catch backwards, right? It actually felt okay there. I could feel it splitting the power, but ah, that approach angle is just no good and it was pushing in there. <laughs> Try the ruts here now, but I'm pretty scared we're gonna have the exact same issue. Oh yeah. I got wheels hanging now, my rear driver's hanging. It's splitting the power really quickly though. Try coming up. Now let's see. Okay, now I got four wheel spin. Nice. So again. That rear passenger's right off the ground. Nice! Bit of scraping out of the front end. 
but the traction, <laughs> that was a big one. The traction control system is very quickly seeing where the slip was and sending the power exactly where it needed to be. So I'll remind you, this is all wheel drive, open differentials, there's no lockers. I have it in trail mode, so that is telling the Honda that I want power to go all four wheels, but you saw it there, the second it slipped, quicker than some other vehicles I felt, this thing rerouted the power and pulled me through. And you know, also kudos to the tires helping me there as well. So that actually wasn't bad, although the nose was rubbing a bit. So as we get into some tougher trails here, I'm still a little worried about it. Okay, now it's time for Wall Street, folks. And I mentioned this is kind of our crossover trail. It's really just a quite a rough road. We were back here with the backhoe helping to widen it, and that created these big, deep ruts. But I thought the Honda was going to be a little bit above. I thought maybe it was going to be ready for the left hook, maybe for the hydro line. It's just not. The clearance in that front end is not there. And this is the point in the video where I will remind you, we borrow these vehicles from the manufacturers, from Honda. Other journalists also rely on these vehicles, so we can't be totally reckless. We have to try and be responsible and not break everything. <laughs> but this is not bad here today. Oh, I'm in the mud now. Oh, we got spin, we got boom, nice. So this is a typical stability control system that we have these days with all-wheel drive where the one tire that ends up spinning in the mud, the vehicle will individually break that tire, which then sends the power across, acting like a locker or more like a limited slip. And the thing I'll say in the Honda is it works extremely quickly to send that power. It's uh, it's not like you're sitting there spinning and spinning and spinning and waiting for a computer to figure out. The computer feels really well versed in what's going on off-road. I want to say something right here. Those are the parking sensors. In off-road mode, in this case trail mode, the parking sensors should automatically be deactivated. This is something that I've only seen one brand ever do and it just makes total sense. I mean, when you're off-road, you're assuming you're gonna be close to whatever, trees, rocks, snow. And it's super annoying when the parking sensors are constantly reminding me that I'm close to things. Yes, I understand that I am close to things. Now, can I turn it off by myself? Yes, but in this Honda, every single time I go away from an object and then get close to another object, it comes back on. I have to temporarily mute the parking sensors every time manually. It's, uh, it's just frustrating. So let me put this word out there to automakers. Off-road modes should automatically deactivate the parking sensors. Alrighty folks, well, we're off the trails now and we're driving on road because let's be honest, the pilot, even the trail sport, is going to live most of its life on road, right? This is a, a family friendly crossover you're going to buy to haul your kids. I've been hauling my kids all week long. I've had three car seats back there and I'll say the Honda has been a, a solid family vehicle. It's boring, but it's boring in the best way because it's just predictable and easy. Everything about it is simple and, and it just works. And I'll just say, add on to that, I was a little disappointed off-road. I really thought it was gonna be better. The clearance looked a little bit better to my eye, but it just just wasn't there. So, I don't know, Dad, what did you what did you think? Are you disappointed? It was exactly what I expected. Oh, gotcha. Because it's not about the all-wheel drive. It's not about the propulsion. As you can see in the shots um, with the off-camber ditches, it hooked up right away it's clearance it's all about clearance and frankly that's always the issue off-road is if you got if you're gonna tear off your air dam and your front fascia I don't care how good your all-wheel drive is yeah so that's it uh, in, in some ways I think that's the reason that we do these things off-road because I get just a little annoyed at the marketing that goes along with vehicles like this totally and, and, and these are the hot vehicles right now, right? Everyone keeps telling us from every brand that they cannot stop selling off-road trims. So it's not surprising to see them popping up, but the, the question then becomes, yeah, are they legitimate or is it just a marketing exercise? And the answer's different all over the map. Some brands, they do more to make it off-road ready and some brands don't. So I, I'm happy to see Honda 
did a little bit more and added some hardware here to make it a little bit better. I felt okay because I knew I had a big skid plate in the front anyway. So if I did make it up on the rocks, you know, you're not going to be tearing out really important components. Um, but all that is to say that, yeah, my conclusion was it's still a rough rotor. I won't call it an off rotor. I land on if you've got a rough cottage road, you know, if you've got a snowy road that doesn't get plowed in the winter, this is the answer for you. But don't buy it to go to the off road park on a Sunday. Right? No, absolutely not. And this sort of a vehicle anyway, it's a family hauler. Uh, frankly, this is the one you buy when you just can't stomach a minivan. Yep. And. <laughs> If you gotta have the trail sports so that maybe your neighbors will go, ooh, look what he has. That's it, that's it, that's all, done. Well folks, we have arrived at the end of this video. Now let's talk about that claim off the top, this being the best Honda off-roader you can buy. Well, I do have to say, I still think it's true because this vehicle offers more than let's say the Honda Passport trail sport does. Just don't be fooled by the marketing and the flashy images you're gonna see of this thing in Moab. It's a good rough rotor. It's gonna handle better than some of the crossovers out there, but it's not a real hardcore off-road machine. So folks, that's the end of this one. Of course, now I need to hear your opinion. So please go into the comments. Let me know what you think of this Pilot Trail Sport. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of Truck King, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya.